In this video, let's work on customizing our export columns or cells. Let's first take a look at what is exported currently. So inside this file, ask yourself, what is the first thing that you see that isn't looking fine? The column's width, right? We can see that the columns are either overlapping or the text inside them isn't showing properly. That is the first thing we would like to fix or improve. So for this, let's go to our export file. And here we are going to use an interface that will auto resize our cells. And the interface is called should auto size. Implementing this interface, we don't have to override any method, but it will automatically resize our cells to the value inside of it. So now let's try and see our export result. We can now see that each column has adjusted automatically and everything looks visually appealing. Next, I would like to show you how you can customize the width of the columns manually. For example, you may want to assign different widths to different cells. Some may need more space while others can adjust in lesser space. For this, let's go to code. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove should auto size. And now we have an interface named width column width. Let's implement that. And this interface has one method which we need to override. So let's copy paste that here. And it expects us to return an array. So return array. Now this array will contain the width defined for each of the column as a numeric value. So you can adjust it according to your need. So here let's define the width of column B to be 55. And the column B refers to the nodes column. So now let's see the difference in our export file. And this is how the file looks like. You may not notice the difference, but this is what we have on our new export. And this is what we had previously. So you can see that the width has been reduced. However, we can see one more thing, that the other columns are now not auto resizing themselves. So the status column is taking less space and the I column is taking more space. We can also use this interface along with the auto size one. So that way we will be only overriding the width defined for the cells and the rest of the cells will be automatically resized for us. Let's go into our code and implement should auto size. So now let's give it a shot in browser. And this is the result. So we have the ID column reassigned. And this is the result. So we can see our ID column is taking the space as required. And status column is also taking the space it needs. And everything looks good. That was about the weights. Now it's time we start our cells and rows. If you look at our export, it is hard to differentiate between the header row and the other data. So what we are going to do is style our header row to look a little bit different from other rows. Maybe have the font size increased or maybe the font weight should be bold. So for this we are going to be implementing a new interface named with style. And by the name of it you can guess it will allow us to style our sheet. So let's implement that. And now we have to override one method which is called styles. We also need to include the worksheet, so worksheet slash worksheet. This method takes in a parameter of sheet. So the reason for having a parameter here is because we have two ways of defining the styles. The first one is a simple one like we have been using and returning an array of styles while the other one is a bit PHP style way, PHP syntax way. And I will show you both in a minute. We may also need to access some properties of the current sheet. So we can use this parameter to access that. First, let's go with the array syntax and make our header row bold. Since our sheet rows are based on number and cells are represented by alphabet, I will be styling the first row and I will make it to have font as bold. With the styles added, let's take a look at our export now. And here we can see that our first row is now bold. Now we can achieve the same styling using the second approach. And for that, let's comment the array part. And I will be using this sheet parameter to style our header row. So what I'm doing is I'm using the current sheet. I'm getting the style of the first row. I'm getting the font property on it and setting the bold as true. So now let's hit the browser again and see our result. And we can still see that our header row is bold. Now that we are talking about styles and in case we want to style entire sheet that includes all the cells and rows, we can define generic styles with this and the interface name with default styles. 
Though this default styles interface is only available after the 3.4.1 version of Laravel Excel and it won't work for the previous version. And this interface has one method which we need to override and it returns an array or nothing. And the reason to and the reason for void here is because we have the styling parameter and we could be styling the sheet using this parameter and not returning anything. So let's override this method in our export file. So now I have defined the method and inside what I've done is I've kept the font as Calibri which is by default Calibri and I've increased the size from 11 to 12. I've also changed the alignment of the values. So each cell is now going to have the value at the center of it both horizontally and vertically. Like I have mentioned before the default styles only work if you have installed the version 3.4.1 or newer version and since we have the version 3.1 we won't be able to export the report with default size. Also for styling we are using different syntax than the regular CSS and I will leave a link in the description or at the top of the video where you can find all the details and styles you can use here. So the last thing I want to talk about is the text wrapping. So if we go to our export we can look at our B cell and we can see that the text is not splitting into the next line. But if we increase the width of the column, then we can see the entire text. But that is not what we would want normally. If I click on wrap text, you can see that the text is splitting into next line. So how can we achieve this? So inside the code, inside our styles, I'm gonna add a new line. What I'm basically doing here is I'm grabbing the entire column of B and I'm just setting the wrap text to true. The method get highest row is going to return me the highest row number. So it is going to be the last row number, which is 93 or 94 actually. And let's try it out in the browser and see the result. And now we can see that our text is getting wrapped and we can see the entire text splitting. That is all about this video and probably for the series. There might be one or two more videos, but until now with what we have learned, we can now create an Excel file with multiple sheets inside and customize the columns according to our need. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.